Welcome back to the International Scale Modeler. I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a review of this baby here. Uh, this is a Gundam, another Gundam review, I know. Uh, but before I uh, jump into that box and everything, I just want to obviously show you that you've got another face on camera now. It's got three cameras. It's a semi pro one, which I bought on the recommendation of John uh, Scale Model Medic. Thanks, mate. Um, takes a little bit of getting used to. It's a bit of a learning curve because it's a lot more different than the, the normal two little cameras that we um, that I'm used to using. Uh, but we've gone back to a forward facing. Something I used to do two years ago. We always used to do the intro forward facing on on uh, reviews. Just adds a bit of a personal touch. And I think we've lost that a bit. So I know Paul's starting to do it as well. So I think I'm going to make the effort and do uh, three cameras as well. It's a bit of a pain when editing, but hey ho, you know if you're going to do two, you can do three. So uh, anyway, without further ado, let's go on and, and have a look in this kit. Now this is the, um, uh, it's a Plum ASO2 series uh, and it's in 135 scale. I'm not sure what scale Gundam's come in actually. Um, I, I can't remember if they're 135 or not, but this Plum is definitely a 135. So if you've got tanks and kits like that that you want to do with it, then this will go with that as well. Uh, now it's an assault, uh, assault suit Lenos. Um, and it is, I'm just going to read this to you now, okay. It's a AS5E3 Lanos mass production type outer planet treaty organization force assault suit. Try saying that when you're drunk. Um, but uh, it does look, um, now this was uh, sent to me uh, very kindly by uh, Dan Bloomfield who runs um, Tokyo Model Detective in Japan. And uh, the website address is flicking up across as we speak now. But if you if you're after stuff um, that you can't get in the UK or or the US or anything, but uh, Japan has a lot of cool stuff that you just can't get on our markets. Uh, Darren will uh, undoubtedly try and find it for you and things like that. And he has a lot of cool stuff, gun dams and odd odd models and things like that um, that are worth a look. But uh, got a nice card in with a box and everything. So thanks, Darren, for for sending this for a review. Uh, obviously we've done Gundam and things like Bandai kits, but we haven't done these plum kits. So uh, be interesting to see what it looks like. But um, go if you, if you want to buy anything from Japan, if you're looking for something odd or, or new or, or different, or some Gundam or different types of uh, mobile suits and things like that, then uh, give Darren a call at uh, hit him up at uh, tokyomodeldetective.com. Uh, right, so into the review. So the box itself, um, on, on this one side here, you can see that we've got uh, just some poses of it as it's built up uh, around there. It's all in Japanese, obviously. Um, some game things, I think, there, probably from the show. Uh, but uh, again, it's the, it's the typical Gundam box, which is this square, um, rectangle, big, chunky box. Instead of having it laid out long and thin, they have them like this, thin and, and uh, taller. Uh, now the price of this, the price is on the box there, it says uh, 6,710 uh, 6, yen. Uh, I don't know what that translates to in British pounds or dollars, but there will be a, a thing going across, a ticket going across, showing what it is in euros, dollars and pounds. Uh, so let's get into the box. The box is quite sturdy itself, so I'm just going to take the lid off. There we go. And as with a lot of Gundam kits, you do get a lot of plastic. Um, you know, there's a, there's a fantastic amount of plastic actually. Uh, so we're just going to take this and pop this up there like so. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sprues. So it's a good lot of plastic. Um, I would imagine it's good for the price. Usually they're around about 20, 20 odd pounds and everything, these things. Um, and uh, I, I do like the kind of amount of building that first one. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go through this sprue by sprue very quickly because a lot of the gun them, they don't really look like anything until they're built up um, and built up properly. Uh, they really do, it's like it's a lot like a ship. You get a ship build um, and you get lots of flat pieces of sprue and you think, oh God, you know, that doesn't look like a ship at all. But literally, once you've built it up and you've got the layers on, you come up with something like that. And uh, it looks, it just, it, they build on layers, which is very nice indeed. Um, so, uh, let's, without further, let's have a quick look in this uh, piece of plastic. Uh, what I do like, they're all individually wrapped, which is really good. I do like that. Uh, now, as I say, we've done the Bandai ones, but this is Plum, a, a, a company called Plum who make these. Um, and to be honest with you, very first glimpse, very first glimpse, um, they look to be very much on a par with Bandai. There's no difference there really that I can 
can tell the details good the the engraving is good i would imagine they fit the, the, pretty much the same as the gundam uh unlike my first one my first gundam i did which is up here behind i don't think you can see it on the screen but uh, i didn't glue it because it's my first one i didn't glue it or anything i just put it together just to see what it like and if i'd enjoy the build and everything um, I did enjoy the build. Uh, the next one, I said the next one I build will be done weathered, glued and everything. Uh, so this one, uh, I am going to do this um, and I'm going to take the time with it. I'm gonna, I've am got two other models to finish first. Once they're done, um, I'm going to start in on this, I think. Um, I really did enjoy the Gundam build. I think they're, they're great mojo um, uh, motivators. They really are. If you lose your mojo, get Gundam, try one of those. It really works. Anyway, so I'm on to the next lot of sprue. Um, I can't imagine there being too much difference between most of these whatsoever. Um, you've then got, uh, as you have a look on the overhead, let's just get you in a second on that one. Okay, so as you can see on the overhead, again, this is a mirror sprue of the other one. The detail and the engraving is all of a good quality. It doesn't seem to be any, any different to the Bandai offerings whatsoever. You've got some bolts and things like that in there as well. It looks very cool. Um, and we're not going to do any more mirrored sprues because that's kind of a waste of time really. But we've got this one, now this looks like it's part of the main body I would imagine, I, I think that is. That does look like the main chest section and things like that in there. And again the engraving is nice and clean and clear and crisp. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any problems with it whatsoever. Um, you know, I can't say how it will fit together. I don't want to take it apart and click it uh, because if I do, they're very hard to get apart, which is why you have to glue them as you build them, um, I was fine. Because I was, at first, I was going to take apart the old one um, and put that back together again um, in glue and all, but to take it apart is an absolute pain in the bum, it really is. Uh, right, so we've got two mirrored sprues there, so we have a look at the other one. Um, and again, all this is all the main outside suit parts, okay, so this is not the skeleton or anything like that, that will be in the grain parts, these are a different colour. A lot with the things, a lot of things that you get with a Gundam is the fact that you can, um, uh, sorry it's really hot today, uh, is the fact that you can build them as is if you want um, and just not do anything, just build them and they look good. Uh, you can um, glue them and do minimal weathering, uh, just literally streaking and things like that or you can go to town, respray them, um, repaint them and do the whole lot from scratch which is what I plan to do on the next one as well. So. Uh, so this, uh, as you can see on the overhead, uh, again, very nice indeed. Let's get you in so you can have a look at really close up look at this. Um, and as you can see, the quality of the engraving is very nice. The moulding's excellent. The bolts and everything look to be very nice. I mean, you know, you, you know, if you're going to weather this up and darken this up, nice wash inside those will look really good indeed. Um, and uh, I have to say, suitably impressed so far. I don't see any problems with any of this. Um, as I say, it's uh, we've done the Gundam one, and I was very impressed with Gundam kits because they have the um, they do the Star Wars ones as well. And I've done a few Star Wars kits now, and they're really much no difference whatsoever. Um, they use the same. Uh, it looks like these are using the same technology as as uh, Bandai is for those as well. Uh, another little sprue and just accoutrements, odds and sods, and maybe an aerial and things like that. There, as you can see. Uh, but uh, okay, very nice indeed. I'm actually looking forward to building this up. And what I like about it, what I have like, is uh, Dan said to me, I'll tell you what, I'll send you something different. You know, I'm not going to send you a Gundam, I'll send you something different and see what you think about it. Um, and uh, so I said, okay, I'll, I'll take whatever you got. And he knows that I like the, uh, the military bots, uh, the Gundam that like this, you know, the, the, the military looking ones rather than the ones with all the flash and the flare coming out the backgrounds and everything. So the grey parts, uh, these will be a lot of the skeletal parts and things like that in the inner part of the body. Um, and uh, as you can see again, engraving is very nice, it's a lovely amount of detail. Um, I can't see any problems with that at all. Uh, I might just take a piece off in a minute and just slot it together to see how the fit goes. I might do that chest piece for you guys, okay, just so you can see what it's like. And that is a mirrored sprue. Okay, we've got, oh, we've got one with all the hands on. Let's have a look at this. <clears throat> and as you can see there, uh, you've got uh, several types of hands. Uh, you've got some clenched fists, which are obviously holding some sort of weapon. Um, you've got another one holding a weapon there. Um, we've got an open hand, open palm sort of hand, um, which is quite a nice gesture. As you can see it on the box there. It's this gesture here with the hand. Oh, I quite like that. It's quite different. It's like it's 
actually kind of, whoa, you know, it's, it's not the usual one where his hands just like that, you know. Um, but apart from that, again, all very well detailed. It's got a nice knuckle detail as well on the knuckles here um, and on the inside of the palm and everything. Uh, so not bad at all. Really nice indeed. And uh, we come on to another sprue. Right, well, on here, it looks like we've got some uh, other rocket launchers or chaff launchers or something like that. Uh, you've got his main, uh, uh, looks like a hammer, battle hammer, uh, which is these parts and this here. Um, and his gun is ever so small. I think that is part of his little pistol. Not a big pistol at all, um, so he's not heavily armed like the other ones, but he has got on the box here. He has got uh, a rocket launcher tube on there. These, I don't know if they're chap or, rocket, uh, or uh, grenade launchers of some sort, you know, uh, or smoke launchers. Uh, and then he's got this big hammer thing here and a little tiny pistol, a little one. Uh, but I do like the look of this. It's very, it's very uh, industrial, desert industrial, which I really do like the look of, actually. And uh, that's going to take some really nice dust effects. I think that's what I'm going to go for on that one. And who knows, I may even do a little tank to go with it. Who knows, I doubt it very much, but who knows. Uh, right, we've got a, one little clear part here, which is for the eyepiece, I would imagine, right in the centre there. No point taking it out of its sprue. And then you've got all the rubberised joint parts there as well, as you can see. Um, and these uh, are all what allow you to articulate the arms and the legs and the heads and the, uh, the body and things like that. Uh, right, okay, so I think it's time to have a look at the instruction manual. So uh, again, it just says uh, modeling instruction manual from Plum, uh, the, uh, the full name of the robot there, or the mobile suit. Uh, we've got some insert for extra parts, I would imagine. Um, now, as with uh, all the Bandai stuff, uh, it is in, in Japanese. Let's zoom you out a bit so you can see this. Okay, it is in Japanese. Um, apart from obviously where it says front view, side view, rear view, and color guide, uh, which is a bit strange. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, there you go, that's better. And as you see, it's posable in several positions. I do like his feet. It's very, uh, very reminiscent of, um, I don't know if any of you have seen um, uh, 2000 AD. Uh, now, I loved the 2000 AD comments as a kid. I had hundreds of them, I had pretty much all of them. And uh, there was a, a thing called um, the ABC Warriors. And these Gundam do remind me of those. Some of them do really do look like this. And this is, looks like a lot like Joe Pineapples. Uh, but um, the color guide in there is in Japanese, unfortunately, as you can see. Uh, but uh, as with any sci-fi and Gundam or anything like that, I think colouring is completely subjective and is, uh, and is open to complete artistic impression. Uh, you don't, you can't have anyone go, oh, well, that's the wrong way to do that, you know. Uh, you can do however you bloody like. It's what I love about sci-fi. Um, you haven't got someone trying to tell you, oh, shouldn't you like that? But um, I think that's fantastic. Uh, I mean, it says here percentages of certain colours. I don't know what brand it is. It may be Mr. Hobby, a lot of the Japanese companies tend to go for Mr. Hobby guns. Um, it gives you the percentages to mix the colours and things like that. I can take that and go, well, I, I approximate that colour, that sort of thing. So that's not too bad. Um, and then you've got setting source, uh, which I would imagine is spelled wrong. Uh, software, so this looks like uh, a cartoon or something that was maybe moved to it. All you uh, Gundam aficionados could maybe let me know at some point. And again, there's a write-up there about it. I would imagine it's the setting the scene, maybe sources of scene or something. And then we go to the main instructions. Uh, on, on this side here, you can see that we've got sprue maps um, and everything, how to cut them off the sprues, uh, the gates and everything. Numbered sprue map, which is nice. If you do lose any parts, you can find out when and where it goes. Now, instruction manual itself comes out to one of these big gatefold affairs. I don't like them. Uh, I've got to say I prefer booklets, but you know, at the end of the day, this isn't going to be a long build. This won't take you long to build, but if you are going to paint and weather it, it will take a lot longer uh, because it literally you have to fix each part to a cocktail six paint spray, you know, and what have you before you put it together. So it's one of those that if you're going to fully respray and weather these, you need to plan your build accordingly because you're going to have to do it in quite sections. Otherwise, you'd be picking your, your airbrush up and down, up and down. It'd be really annoying. Anyway, uh, as you can see, very simple instructions, a lot like the Bandai ones, uh, you know, fit this in here. The Bandai ones, I've got to say, are a lot clearer and a lot easier to understand. These are more, I would say, traditional modelling instructions, um, uh, not hard to understand whatsoever. 
very easy indeed. And as, you, as with all gun it's a skeleton that gets made up first. Um, you've got leg portion here, chest portion here. Well, it's not just, just the skeleton actually, you're not doing the skeleton first. So uh, uh, you're actually doing it in lots of sub-assemblies. As you can see here, um, you're doing the uh, wings or jetpacks or whatever it is, the legs, uh, the arms, the, the hammer, um, all in separate little sub-assemblies and then popping them all together right at the very end, which is, is not a bad way to build. It means you can do things uh, as you go. And that pretty much is that for the instructions. Uh, very quick, simple and concise instructions. Um, not gonna be hard to build whatsoever. And um, again, I have to say, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'm looking forward to building it. I'm gonna paint weather this one. I'm gonna do uh, a bit extra on it as well. And it's gonna be one of those ones that I'm not gonna worry too much about getting it finished in any time. I would love to just build it and put it in the sci -fi, summer sci-fi SIG. Well, this is summer sci-fi SIG on the ISM, but uh, I know I'm not gonna have time now. It's, it's now it's September, it, the business is really gonna pick up my transport business. So I'm not gonna have time to do it. But uh, really nice. Uh, thanks again to Darren at TokyoModelDetective.com uh, for supplying this review sample. Really excited to go and build it. And if you're looking for anything, give Darren a shout and uh, see if he can find you what you're looking for in Japan and he will ship it over to you. Uh, so that is the uh, the uh, Plum 135 Assault Suit Lanos AS5E3 Lanos Mass Production Type Out of Planet Treaty Organization Force Assault Suit. Uh, and until next time, take care. Bye bye.